With the sound of the waves of the Indian Ocean and the scent of exotic spices, on September 5, 1946, on the island of Zanzibar, a new soul began its journey. Farok Bulsari, as his parents named him, was born into a family with Persian roots in a world where different cultures and traditions meet. Farok's childhood was like a colorful mosaic tile composed of various pieces of experiences and cultures. His father, Bomi, worked as a court clerk, and his mother, Jair, was the pillar of family love and warmth. In the Bulsari household, music was an integral part of everyday life. The radio always played melodies that echoed from London to Bombay, awakening in young Farrakh a curiosity and love for art. At the age of eight, Farrakh was sent to a boarding school in Panchgani, India. Far from home in a land of contrasts, young Farrakh found refuge in music. He learned to play the piano and participated in school performances, where his talent for music and attention to detail began to emerge. It was a time of innocent dreams and the first spark that would later ignite the fire of his musical passion. When he returned to Zanzibar, the world around Farrakh was changing. Political changes and unrest marked this period. In search of stability and better opportunities, the Bulsari family decided to move to England, to the heart of London, where Farrakh's star would begin to shine brightly. In London, amidst the fog and rain, Farrakh found a new world of opportunities. His life in England began in the 60s, an era of cultural turmoil and musical revolution. He enrolled at Ealing Art College, where he studied art and design. In this creative environment, Farrakh became Freddie, a young man who explored his identity and passion through drawings and designs. Freddie didn't just draw, music lived in him. His fascination with rock and roll and blues and idols like Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin shaped his musical vision. Participating in various bands, such as Wreckage and Sour Milk Sea, was more than a hobby. It was his destiny. London, the 1960s. The city was a vibrant tapestry of sounds, colors, and culture, a scene of youthful revolution and musical rebirth. In this burgeoning world, Freddie Mercury, once Farrakh Bulsari, walked the streets, absorbing every note and every lyric that echoed around him. At Ealing Art College, Freddie's creativity bloomed in full splendor. His hands created more than drawings and designs. They created worlds where he could be free. Here, among the colors and canvases, Freddie honed his artistic expression, which would later become an integral part of his musical career. Freddie did not just dream, he created. Participating in bands like Ibex and Sour Milk Sea was more than a fleeting amusement. On the small stages, in the smoky rooms of London clubs, Freddie's voice first resonated freely, powerfully, promisingly. It was a period of encounters that would shape Freddie's future. He met Roger Taylor and Brian May, two talented musicians with whom he would share the stage and dreams. In these early days, their shared passion for music was the foundation on which something magnificent would be built. Throughout these years, Freddie also explored his personal identity. With his bold style and theatricality, he challenged conventions and tested boundaries. His unique appearance on stage, mixed with his undeniable talent, began to attract attention. Freddie Mercury was not just a singer, he was a performer, an artist who broke down the walls between the audience and music. When Freddie, Brian, Roger, and John Deacon finally came together, magic happened. Queen, the band that would transform not only their lives, but the entire music scene, was born. With Freddie as the frontman, Queen was ready to embark on a journey that would take them to the heights of global fame. Freddie was more than a singer, he was a maestro who orchestrated every movement, every emotion on stage. With Brian, the wizard on the guitar, Roger, who brought life to the drums, and John, the solid foundation on the bass, Queen was ready to conquer the world. Their music was not just sound, it was a reflection of dreams, fears, love, and struggle. Their first albums, like stars twinkling in the night, slowly attracted attention. With Queen and Queen the Second, the band proved they were more than a fleeting phenomenon. It was in sheer heart attack and a night at the opera, where Freddie's voice, full of drama and power, intertwined with the virtuosity of the other band members, creating something that transcended the ordinary. Bohemian Rhapsody, 
a six-minute symphony was more than a song. It was a bold journey through various musical styles, from opera to hard rock. Freddie, with his unmistakable vision, took the band and the audience on a journey that would be remembered for generations. Every Queen performance was a spectacle, theatrical and full of energy. Freddie on stage was like a wizard, transforming reality with his voice and movements. His clothing, often lavish and extravagant, was part of his performance, an expression of art that transcended the boundaries of music. The rise of Queen was not just the ascent of a band, it was the rise of the idea that music could be more than sounds. It could be a story, it could be a revolution, it could be a bridge connecting hearts and minds. Freddie and his bandmates, now brothers in art, were at the forefront of this revolution, ready to write history note by note, word by word. As the 1970s progressed, Queen continued to grow like a wildfire spreading through a dry forest. Albums like News of the World and Jazz became not only musical phenomena, but also cultural symbols. Freddie Mercury, now an icon, carried the weight of fame with unique grace and confidence. In these years of ascent, Freddie's private life was like a quiet melody playing in the background of his noisy fame. Mary Austin, the woman who had captured his heart, became his closest companion. Their relationship, built on deep understanding and respect, was the anchor in his turbulent life. Their engagement, though it did not lead to marriage, was the foundation on which Freddie built his emotional world. However, with the rise to the top came shadows that followed the light of fame. Freddie, always in search of love and acceptance, faced internal battles as intense as his stage performances. Over time, he realized that his love for Mary was not the only truth of his heart. Alongside this realization, his sense of alienation grew, feeling that his true self was hidden behind the curtain of his public persona. Finally, with the courage that defined his entire life, Freddie acknowledged his truth. He was homosexual. This admission, though liberating for him, brought new challenges. The 1970s and 1980s were times when homosexuality was still a taboo topic, and Freddie found himself in the center of public and media attention. Mary, though hurt, remained his close friend and support, a symbol of selfless love that transcends conventional boundaries. Freddie's life became a network of complex emotional relationships, but despite everything, his passion for music and performance did not wane. On stage, Freddie continued to be an unstoppable force, a symbol of freedom and expression. Each of his songs, every performance, was a reflection of his inner struggle and triumph. Queen continued its ascent, and Freddie continued his journey, bravely facing the challenges and obstacles that life brought him. In the 80s, as the world pulsed with the rhythms of a new era, Freddie Mercury and Queen reached the pinnacle of their fame. It was a period when each of their songs, every album, was like a stellar burst in the endless galaxy of music. In this decade, Freddie was not just a singer, he was an icon, a symbol of resistance against conventions, a maestro leading an orchestra of emotions and melodies. The brightest moment of this era occurred in 1985 at the Live Aid concert. Wembley Stadium, filled with crowds yearning for music, became a temple where Freddie performed his greatest miracle. With every movement, every note, he hypnotized the audience, turning the concert into something that transcended an ordinary event. It was a performance that defined an entire generation, a moment when Queen showed that music has the power to unite the world. But while Freddie was invincible on stage, his private life was filled with struggle and challenges. His sexuality and lifestyle put him at the center of the AIDS crisis, which was at its peak at that time. Freddie, always a private person regarding his personal life, faced this challenge away from the public eye with his friends and loved ones by his side. Despite health challenges, Freddie never stopped creating. His passion for music was like an eternal flame that could not be extinguished. Albums such as The Works and A Kind of Magic continued to conquer the top charts, while Innuendo, released in his final years, was like a grand finale symphony of his career. Freddie's final year was quiet, far from the spotlight's glare. His farewell from this world was peaceful, dignified, surrounded by the love of those who cherished him most.
He passed away on November 24, 1991, but his music, his spirit, remained indestructible. The legend of Freddie Mercury continued to live in the hearts and souls of millions around the world. His music, his passion, and his struggle became eternal, a symbol of hope, love, and the indomitable spirit of humanity. In every note he sang, in every word he wrote, Freddie Mercury remained alive, a beacon illuminating the path for future generations of artists and dreamers.